This video gives one of my favorite applications of polar coordinates, computing the area under the standard normal curve. There's actually a whole family of normal curves. They differ based on where their center is and how big their spread is. The standard normal curve is the one whose mean or center is at zero and whose spread given by a standard deviation is one. And it turns out that this equation 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2 gives you this exact shape of the standard normal curve. The e to the minus x squared makes sense. It'll be tallest when x is 0, and then it'll decay rapidly as you go on either side. And dividing by 2 turns out to be necessary to get the right spread or standard deviation. But you might wonder, what about this factor of 1 over square root of 2 pi? That's just affecting the height of the curve. Why pick that number? And why not just have a number one in front to make it simpler? Well, the reason that coefficient is used is in order to make the total area under this normal curve equal to exactly one, which is exactly what you want it to be if this total area is representing a total probability. So let's prove that the area is one. The area, I'll call it A, is given by the integral from negative infinity to infinity, since this function goes on forever in either direction, just gets kind of vanishingly small, of our function 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2 dx. Now this function, e to the minus x squared over 2, is notoriously difficult to integrate. In fact, it has no elementary antiderivative. There's no simple way to integrate it. So here's the trick. Instead of calculating a, the area, we're going to calculate a squared. So that's going to be the same integral times itself. It's hard to imagine that that would make anything easier to compute, but in fact it will. I'm going to copy the first integral over as it is, but for the second integral, it doesn't really matter whether I call this dummy variable x or y or t, so I'm going to replace that variable with y's. Next, I'm going to rewrite this product of two single variable integrals with a double integral. This is just a special case of the general principle we've seen in class, that if you have the integral of a product of two functions, one is just a function of x and the other a function of y, dx dy, that's equivalent to doing the integral f of x dx times the integral of g of y dy. You might be starting to notice now how polar coordinates might creep in to help us. Let me first bring the 1 over square root of 2 pi factors out to the front. And I can use my exponent rules to rewrite e to the minus x squared over 2 times e to the minus y squared over 2 as e to the minus x squared over 2 minus y squared over 2, since when I take the product, I add the exponents. And I'm going to start to disconnect from the x and y by rewriting dx dy as just dA. In fact, I think I'll also change my bounds of integration. Instead of writing out my bounds, x goes from negative infinity to infinity, and so does y, I'm just going to say that we're going to integrate over the entire xy plane. So I'll just write this as the integral over r, where r is the xy plane. Now let me write this in polar coordinates. So it's 1 over 2 pi. And instead of dA, I'm going to write r dr d theta. Instead of e to the minus x squared minus y squared over 2, that's the same thing as e to the minus r squared over 2. And theta. Let's see, r is going to run from 0 to infinity, and theta will run from 0 to 2 pi to cover the whole xy plane. Now I've got something I can actually compute. I'm going to use the same property to split up my integral into the integral from theta equals 0 to 2 pi of d theta times the integral from r equals 0 to infinity of e to the minus r squared over 2 r dr. First integral is just theta between 2 pi and 0. And for the second integral, 
the integral of negative r squared over 2 r dr. I could do a u substitution, but I think I'm just going to kind of do a u substitution in my head. In other words, use a guess and check method. My guess is that this integral is just going to be e to the minus r squared over 2. And I'm going to check over here by taking the derivative, e to the minus r squared over 2. Let's see, I get e to the minus r squared over 2 times the derivative of minus r squared over 2, which is minus 2r over 2. So that's going to give me e to the minus r squared over 2 times minus r. So I was close, but I didn't quite get it right. To get it right, I'm going to need to stick a minus sign in there. Okay. Now I'm being a little sloppy when I write my bound as infinity. You can't really evaluate at infinity. What this really means is I'm doing the limit as t goes to infinity of minus e to the minus r squared over 2 between t and 0. The first bit of my expression for area squared is just 1 over 2 pi times 2 pi minus 0. So that actually cancels out to just 1. So all I have left to do is to evaluate this, this limit. So it's the limit as t goes to infinity of minus e to the minus t squared over 2 plus e to the minus 0 squared over 2. Well, that part's just 1. And as t goes to infinity, e to the minus t squared over 2, that's e to the minus a very large number, so that's getting vanishingly small. That part is just going to 0. So the end result is that the area squared is equal to 1. And therefore, the area equals 1, just as we wanted to prove. So 1 over the square root of 2 pi turned out to be the perfect factor to make the area under our standard normal curve equal to 1. And the trick for proving it had to do with taking area, squaring it, going up a dimension, and then using polar coordinates to compute it. What genius. I've heard this proof attributed to Gauss, but I don't actually know the history of it. So if anyone else knows, please leave me a note in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed this proof that the area under the normal curve is 1.